Ooh, that did not sound good. Welcome back, guys. So we actually started our power process back when we first started digging our foundation because we started digging our power trench then. And I'll leave that link up to those videos up in the corner there. So now that we have all of our power trench dug, we are in charge of laying all of the conduit for it and then pulling the pole line and then APS, our power company out here, will come out and pull the actual wire and place our meter and hook us up to power. We're also placing a transformer at the corner of our property about 300 feet away from our house. So we have to run three inch conduit from our house to the transformer and it has to be buried 24 inches under grade. Um, and so that is what I was putting out there and that's kind of what we're connecting here. From the transformer Ooh, out nice to easy. the switch box that's which is like out to the road um, we have to have two inch conduit and it has to be buried 42 inches or 40 inches oh, one of those underneath grade um, and that one's a little more complicated because we actually have to dig across our road now our road is all privately owned so it's not too big of a deal and we did it in an afternoon but because of the stress of trying to do it really quickly, I didn't really film any of it. So uh, I'll try to add in a picture here though so you can see it. So total length, I think it ended up being 320 feet from the transformer to the house, and then it ended up being 640 feet from the transformer all the way to the switch cabinet. We had to go from the corner of our property about 300 feet to the road, down the road a little bit, and then across it. I totally forgot to record this, but we basically blew this fish line through using a leaf blower and a plastic bag. I'll record the next one. Um, this is our three inch line that we just did. So we're gonna have to do that on our two inch line. And then APS, our power company out here, is gonna give us a flat line. We were just worried about whether or not we'd be able to pull the flat line through. Um, so we we're pulling this through and then we'll pull the flat line through with this. So we're gonna shove the plastic bag down in there with the line attached to it. So then what we gotta do is APS, we gotta move that giant rock out, but they're gonna help us pull from here 
to that box because we can't open that box. So we gotta wait for them to do that. Or we'll pull all this strap, flat strap stuff through tomorrow probably. So the power company APS provides us with this composite type pad that the transformer sits on. They also provided us the ground rod and then the flat strap, the pole line um, to go through the conduit. We didn't think we could blow the flat strap through with the leaf blower or suck it through with the vacuum. Um, so that's why we pulled the smaller line through first and then pulled the flat strap with the bigger line. Um, but we had to sink this grounding rod in and put the pad in and then they came and basically set the transformer on that pad that we installed. So now this is back. No, I see So keep doing that. What are you doing right now? I'm pulling it. Okay, you're gonna have to do that then. Cause you're definitely still pulling the strap through. I know I am, I can feel it, but you're gonna have to help it go through because otherwise it's too hard to pull. After talking to our contact at APS, they told us to just leave this section of trench open and cut a piece of conduit to length and leave enough strap for them to pull across the road and that they would come and pull across the road, which they did the day they came to pull the power line. Okay, I mean, it should be quite a ways. All right, go ahead. Is it? No, this is going to break, so we got to do something different. All right. Um, on there? I don't have next to yeah, let me look. It's uh, unfortunately it's just because I think it's so cold out here. And the sense. wire's like super stiff. That makes sense. But um, I'm going to run some stuff down to him. I don't, I don't think I have one. Oh, okay. I think so. A lot of strain going on. As bad as this one's pulling, I would hate to have anybody anywhere that could get hurt. Yeah. Well, we'll get out of the way. I don't want to get hit with something. Well, shit. It's hard to explain how devastating it was to be so close to being hooked up with power and then having that line break. So part of the issue, besides the wire being pretty cold, was that we had four 90 degree bends in this line, uh, in the conduit, which made it really hard. And like I said, it was a 640 feet, so it was a pretty long pull. So what happened was as they were pulling, it was really tight and the pull line actually cut through the 90 degree sweep of the conduit right before it came out of the transformer pad. This caused uh, the, the wire to actually be pulled through the conduit into the dirt and then it got stuck 
on the underside of the transformer pad right before it came out. So that's why the line snapped. APS dug up the line, they replaced that sweep, and then they came back a day later and were able to pull the line the rest of the way just with their crane, and it was fairly easy. Yeah, if you get on big commercial jobs down in places, they actually have them concrete all the sweeps just for that reason. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, they'll have them concrete over it. That way, when they pull through, even if it does wear, it's yeah. still got something to stop it. Oh, that's cool. Instead of filling up with dirt. Yeah. Oh no. Just close so that they can lift it into place once they get the other. After getting the primary line pulled out of the conduit and the transformer set down, they then pulled the secondary line, which goes from the transformer to our house, which is only about 320 feet, like I said, and it only has two 90 degree sweeps, one at the beginning and one at the end, and then a really long, wide 90 degree curve, so it was a little easier. Nice and easy because I'm a, like a little ways from the panel. Bad luck. I dare I might be. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it looks like we're right at the end, so. conductor and then that little black line inside there. Yep. That's the semiconductor okay. material. This is your insulation. And, and again the semiconductor part right there. <laughs> just anti-corrosion stuff or just lube to get it in something? It actually fills any voids that are in there and same thing. That okay. electricity is always trying to find anywhere that it can tree out to. Okay. Yeah. And if there's a little dip somewhere, it'll sit and work at that from the inside just gotcha. a million times a day. And, and it may take 20 years, but at one point it'll fail out of there. 
So that fills up any small voids that are there. Cool. It also makes it Easier. pretty well waterproof. Okay. Cool. And that one is a lightning arrestor. Okay. They have a limited usefulness. They do stop some, but they aren't perfect by any means. Gotcha. This will connect ground. This will go on one of the primary bushings. Okay. It has a small fault section in here. Okay. So if it goes over voltage, it overrides that, blows it out, and it'll actually take this whole bottom. Yeah. It'll discharge off. It'll blow completely in Ooh. the clear, Jeez. and then. When we show up, we know that it's blown because this whole bottom piece is blown. So <laughs> investment of time to do that. Of course, I'm sure there's somebody down in Phoenix that runs the numbers who would feel very different about that than I do. I'm <laughs> shooting! <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah, but the shot is. Like, yeah, that's the least of my worries, so, you know. I'm never gonna have eight services on here. I was just about to ask how many you can get on there. Eight? Well, you can, yeah, you can get quite a few, but if you start getting more than like four, okay. it's it's pretty packed. Yeah. Especially with wires coming in and stuff. Yeah. I mean, work. could you imagine eight conduits coming out of there all with that wire? Yeah, absolutely not. So they bring one primary line into the transformer. So it has one hot conductor, and then that's surrounded by a bunch of copper conductors, which are the neutral. So once it gets into that transformer, uh, it comes in at around 7,000 volts, and then it goes into the transformer and gets lowered to two 120-volt legs. And this is called single phase, obviously, because one phase is coming in. So that 7,000 volt leg gets split to two 120 volt legs, and those are the two that are covered in that plastic insulator right now. And then the one on the bottom is the neutral leg that also goes to the panel. So it brings two 120 hots and a neutral into the panel from the transformer. because I worked for the company and gave it to me for free. Yeah, they're expensive. He goes, if I bought it, I don't know if it had a good trade-off or not. He goes, yeah. but because he gave it to me for free, he goes, it's awesome. He goes, yeah, he goes, I'm putting power back. Okay, you ready for this? Yeah. I mean, first of all, should you watch this or that? Watch this. Oh, that's a big-ass breaker. That's on, nothing happened. We don't need these three because they're generators. What's Upstairs this bottom one? Nothing, these are nothing. This is okay. a generator. Oh. Arc fault went away. Upstairs lights, downstairs lights, upstairs bathroom heater, washer, refrigerator, dryer, downstairs bathroom heater. That should go off in a second. Perfect. Range hood, main split we don't do. Water heater, living room outlet, should go off in a second. Cross face lights, smoke detectors. Smoke detectors just beeped. Oh my god, everything. So we need the. I need to wire up the well pump today. But other than that, we're good. Let's go inside. Come on, babies. Hey guys, so just before we end the video, I just want to say a couple things. One is thank you to APS and thank you to the linemen that came out. They were awesome guys. They were extremely knowledgeable and proficient at their jobs. I mean, our pole kind of threw wrenches at them and they were able to kind of brush it off and fix the problem and get us power in a timely manner and it was fantastic. It is fantastic having power now. However, I do want to talk about our future plans for power. 
We are planning on having solar. In fact, I have about 14 solar panels sitting outside right now, as well as an inverter. Uh, we just don't have a spot for them right now, and we're not sure exactly what we want to do. I also do want to add in wind generation eventually, um, and put a wind turbine out in the pasture somewhere. That way it's a little bit away from the house in case it does make a humming noise. Um, and we won't have to deal with that in the house. So those are the two future plans for the house to be more sustainable and more green and more uh, environmentally friendly out here rather than just taking power from our power plant. Um, that being said, it is fantastic to have power. It is a game changer to be able to charge camera batteries when we want, uh, turn lights on. I still walk into rooms sometimes and try to use my phone as a light because I forget that we have light switches that work. We have a refrigerator so we can keep food cold. It's just an absolutely game changer. Uh, it's a fantastic morale booster. And we lived for about two weeks just on a generator. So we ran the generator for about an hour or an hour and a half before we went to bed. And then sometimes when we woke up in the morning and intermittently throughout the day to kind of keep the house heated. The lows during that time were in the single digits, and the highs were around uh, freezing. So I think the lowest high we had during those two weeks was around 30 degrees. So it wasn't very fun. We were sleeping with like seven blankets. So look forward to uh, more videos more regularly. Like I've been saying, we're going to get one out every week now that we can edit it whenever we want, and we can charge batteries whenever we want, and we won't run out of power in our camera or in our tools. Uh, if you have any questions like usual, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and hit that like button. Yeah, thanks for watching. I think that will work. I don't know though, honestly. Cute. She's just sitting on the rock. Her poor little leg hurts. Raisin, are you excited? Are you excited? We're excited.